Hello, I'm Gay Ann, and welcome to I Believe Today. Yes, I'm so glad to have you all here. Dom and Charlie are here. They produce this program and, and edit it and everything. And this is Gay Ann, my dear friend. We're all friends, we're all family. We've already done a program like this together, but it was so good, we decided to do part two. It's so good. So people have written down questions or subject matters and put them in a basket. So what I want you to do is I want you to share this on your page because it's so fun. So much fun. Yes. Oh my goodness. All right. So who's first? Let's see. Uh, Charlie, mm -hmm. why don't you pick one for Dom? Yeah. We have no idea what these are. I promise. We did not write them. Can God be mad at me? Whoa. Uh, there is a thing such as righteous anger. I think the first 30 years of my life he was angry. <laughs> I'm not sure he's even over it yet, but no, I am, I am sure, I am sure. I'm, yes, God can get angry. He can, not necessarily mad, if, uh, if that means something different, but uh, he's a gracious God. He loves us as little children, and our little children that... I'm sure many people have kids that are disobedient. You still love your child. They spill milk. They do things. You still love them. You, so God is, this, is the same thing. In fact, I'll tell you an amazing story. When, we, when I first got saved in 1975, 76, we're riding down the road, and two years later, I had never listened to a secular song. Mm -hmm. On came the song, Ann Murray's song, He Needed Me. And I said, wow, what a beautiful religious song. And then I realized I was on a secular radio station. Mm -hmm. So I got home that night, went into the bedroom where my daughter was going to bed, and she said, Daddy, can I pray for you? And I said, sure. And I got on my knees, and she put her little hands on me and said the most beautiful prayer in the world. This is my daddy. I love him. God, take care of me. It was just so gorgeous. And I got up, and I went to turn the light on, and I, a light went on in my head. This little child cannot do a single thing for me. She can't even wash the dishes. She can't make me money. She don't wash the car. She doesn't do anything. But I love her. And if she was taken out of my life, I'd have a hole in my heart till the day I went to, to heaven. And so I realized I needed her. I needed her in my life. And guess what? God needs us in his life. Yes. You know, that's beautiful. And you know, um, I, so what I got from your answer just now was that yes, God can get angry. But his posture toward his children is not anger. It's love. It is. Yes. It's relationship. Okay. Yeah. And I, I remember when my little girl, well, I raised my daughter for the last part of her childhood by, by myself. And I remember when she was a baby, um, her mom and I went to visit Granny in the mountains of North Carolina. And I think my mom, my mom's over there, I think she bought us one of those Graco cribs when she was a baby. Do you remember that? It was, it was portable, a portable crib, and it had a little um, case, a little oblong case, and you'd take it out and undo it and set it up, and it set the, the floor of it was about this high above the floor. Mm -hmm. And so we used it as a crib. It's like a little playpen, yeah. but we used it as a crib when we traveled. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were at Granny's, and w when you're at Granny's, uh, in the, she had a little one bathroom, little, with a wood-burning stove in the middle of it, tin roof house. I guess it was built around 1900, mom, maybe? It was old. And um, uh, right there in the mountains of North Carolina. And I remember being at Granny's, and I was there a lot. Uh, I was born there. Mm -hmm. I remember being at Granny's that we would wake up before dawn to frying the smell of frying bacon yes. and biscuits oh, and boy. baking and yes. you know eggs and and roosters crowing at dawn mm -hmm. and but I remember getting up one morning when my little girl was um uh, I don't even think she was walking yet but my wife would lay her on the bed in the morning and I'd wake up and she would be patting my face <laughs> with her little face right in my face and I'd wake up and I'd see her. It, I can't even tell you what it did for me. So this one morning sure. at Granny's, 
She was asleep out right outside of our little bedroom in the living room there um, where the wood burning stove was and she was asleep in that little gray co crib and I was walking over before dawn I was walking over her crib saying I can't wait till she gets up I can't wait till she gets up wow. it was just me and her she was asleep I can't wait till she gets up and God spoke to my heart that he walks over my bed in the morning Mm. and says, I can't wait till he gets up. Amazing, wow. yes. I can't wait till he gets up. We have a relationship with the Lord. Yes. He loves you so much. Yes. He's not mad at you. He has good plans for your life. Yes. Plans not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope and to Amen. prosper you. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11 promises you that and you can depend on God's word. He's loyal to his promises. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, who asked that? That was good. You asked him. Okay, ask me one, please. <laughs> what does it mean to be a child of God? Oh, well, kind of the same subject matter. You just answered it, did you not? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a child of God? You know... I think being a child of God, what does it mean? The meaning of it is not just God's view of us, but it's our view of who we are. Mm. There's a scripture, and I'm not quoting it exactly, but it's our belief mm. and our faith that God has given us that makes us know that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. There is a faith that God gives us so we can know we are his child. When you know it, when you know, born again believer, that you are a child of God, when you know it, that you come from God, that you were with God, that you're going back to God, that you don't really die, you, you transition into the next season of your eternal life with the Lord. Yes. When you believe this and you really understand that you are a child of God, it gives you a certain a surety, it gives you a certain confidence in life and you walk with a knowing of who you are. You know, Reba wrote that song, it's not because of what I am, it's not because of what I've done, but because of whose I am. And she tells a story of Richard Roberts. He had sent her that story, and that's where she wrote the song from, where he was, he wanted to, be on his own as not just the son of Oral Roberts. So he went out in Tulsa and he went out to his favorite car dealership and he wanted to buy a car on his own. And, and he didn't have any showing of income, you know, he was a, a teenage boy and they said no. And then when one of them figured out he was Oral Roberts' son, any car you want on the lot, right? you know, they're in Tulsa. So, it, when we have a knowing in our hearts whose we are, that we have God's DNA, that we are a child of the Most High King, when someone doesn't like us, it's okay, because someone loves us. Yes. Yes. When someone, someone is against us, it's okay, because someone is for us. Yes. And if God is for us, who can be Amen. against us? Amen. It's not... It's not convincing God that we're his child. It's having the revelation and illumination that we are a child of God. I think that's what it really means. Yes. Yes. All Beautiful. Right. Let's give good. you an A minus. No, A plus. <laughs> sounds like my, sounds like my uh, last year, and, and I, went to, I was at Northwest University. I'm at Aiden University this year. Last year, I was at Northwest University, and I got uh, I was almost a 4.0. I got um, A or an A plus in every class except theology. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's something really uh, ironic yeah, about that. That's right, I got an A minus, so. Yes. That may be the next question. Yeah. So watch out. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you asked him and you asked me, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna ask Charlie. Yeah. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh no. That was nothing to do with marriage. <laughs> Okay, explain 
a difference between a white lie and a black lie? <laughs> okay, I think I'm an expert in this. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Oh, seriously. Uh, I think a white lie is not a real lie. <laughs> I, think, I think it's an avoidance. Very often like, uh, I know what you got me for my birthday, and you go, no, no, that's not it. Well, that's kind of a white lie. Okay. Or, or you don't want to spoil something for someone, or you're trying to make a surprise or something. That's what I call a white lie. Yeah. Okay. What about the telephone calls? Is so-and-so home? <laughs> That's a black lie. Yeah, that's a black lie. <laughs> that's a black lie. But, but a black lie is a black lie. We all know what a lie is. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. But I, I think there is a little bit of difference. I think it's sometimes. Sp sparing somebody from it, pain. It's, that's all it or is. Or embarrassment. Yeah. Or... yeah. We're sure hoping God thinks that. <laughs> yes. Well, she's an expert. It, I, that's my expert opinion. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, do you I think, give her an A plus. Yeah. Do, oh, do you good. think that? Um, do you think that it's a lie if you just deceive and don't lie? That that's how I did it as a kid. <laughs> I would like um I wouldn't lie. Divert. Well, I did lie as a young teenager, yeah. but I you know yeah. I got it beaten out of me. But <laughs> yes. you got better at it, right? Yes. So, but but like um as an adult, I don't lie. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't because yeah. You don't need to. I stopped when I was a teenager, yeah. you know? But but I, but I want to tell you this. Um, I don't lie or cuss. Uh -huh. Unless it's absolutely <laughs> necessary. necessary. No, I'm decent. No. Uh, but but I, think that, I think that you can not lie and not tell the truth and it's not wrong. In other words, um, let, let's say uh, you say, J Jeff, if you really have it in your heart not to lie. Or let, 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 let's say... Um, uh, I don't want you to go to the restaurant at 7, even though you're wanting to go at 6.50 to get there because you want to get home and you're tired. But I know at 7.15 there's a surprise party for you there. Oh. So I might say, you know, I might say, well, you know what? Um, I called and they said our table's at 7.15. They must be packed. Mm -hmm. That's not a lie. I did call you guessed. To, to do it for 7.15. Yes. They must be packed. Yes. But I didn't lie. No, you just left out the details in between. Yeah, is that a lie? I I think it no. verges on a lie. Oh. But... <laughs> you know, I, mean, I got to say this. When I first moved south, I'm from New York City, and when people didn't like you, they said, they say, I don't like you. Yes. I moved south, and you know what I realized? Everybody politely lied. They'll say, well, bless, instance, your bless your heart. Little... Or the one is, how are you feeling today? Now, you know, his dog just died. He lost... Somebody stole his gun mm -hmm. out of the back of the truck. Well, I'm fine. You know, mm -hmm. and so the, the politely lied. I never could tell where I was hmm. with them, so. Thank you so much for being a part of this program today. You know, we have bungalow worship our beautiful gathering right here at the bungalow of worshipers, a band, singers. You turn bones into armies. We have The Vow, our dynamic ministry to 50 and over right here in Orlando. <laughs> Tabitha's ministry, our victorious ministry for widows. Then we have Jeff Ferguson Ministries, which is our daily I Believe program every day at 1 p.m. on YouTube or Facebook, different social media platforms. Thank you for supporting this ministry. This is a healing place. This is a healing